everyone. Good morning, Kansas City. Welcome to another edition of KCPS Homeroom. I'm Chris Odom, the ELA coordinator for the Kansas City Public Schools. Uh, this morning we have a special edition and something that we're going to start to do from time to time. Uh, I'm going to speak with one of my students from uh, prior teaching years at Paseo Academy. Who's joining us today. His name is Lamond Rushing. Uh, he's a poet and somebody that uh, after all of my years in working with in the classroom, uh, remember to ask me one time if I wanted to do a piece with him. So uh, I thought it'd be exciting for us to start collaborating when I'm going to start a new project like this. I wanted to call up the guy who asked me to collaborate to get it all started um, one more time. So what's exciting is that he and I wrote a piece a long time ago for a Black History production and we performed it at Paseo and our goal mutually, we've been talking about it, has been to put it back together and make it really polished and sound professional. So we're gonna start working on that a little bit. Um, this concept today, we're gonna try to revisit a little bit. It kind of comes from watching what's going on online and how people are still being really creative and sharing uh, their perspectives and their stories and also their creative work. So um, Lamont's gonna share a poem. I have a poem that I'm also gonna do that I wrote today and yesterday. Um, and an exciting reason to keep asking people that you've worked with that who are no longer in your classroom uh, if they're still writing. And I put a post on Facebook two days ago and had about 45 or 50 people respond who said they would love to have this conversation and to maybe share what's going on with them in their adult lives and how writing is still part of that or maybe even a big part of that because we do have a lot of people out there performing um, and doing some pretty amazing things. So Lamont knows that. Um, we're gonna hear from here, him in just a minute and we're gonna make the remaining of this show mostly about him. By on purpose, I wanted to go ahead and do a poem though, um, which is the act of leading the way and being vulnerable yourself. It really has a lot uh, of likelihood that people will follow. And so if you're out there thinking about leading poetry slams and things of that nature, one, get a hold of me and two, lead by example. Okay, so this is a new piece. It's called, I want to hear, I'm sorry, I wrote it. I'll say what it's called, right? It's called, I want to write a poem. I want to write a poem that others can hear. Others are everywhere. Others are here. I want to write a poem that others can feel. Others are feelers. Others are real. I want to write a poem that lives by a lake. Others don't live there. No one is late. I want to write a poem that invites others to read. Others will come to that because others just need. I want to write a poem that others can smell. Others can do that when others do dwell. I want to write a poem for others to smile. We need that so much to come back into style. I want a poem for others to move. This nation's well shaken. It needs to come out of its groove. Okay, so that's my most recent piece that I actually have written in my entire life. And thank you for listening. Um, my favorite part of working on a piece is trying to hit that last line. So uh, yeah. I, I still like that last line. I wrote it earlier this morning. Otherwise, I wouldn't oh. have shared the piece. So, I like it. Thanks. Thanks, Lamont. I haven't uh, seen Lamont in a long time, but it really doesn't feel that way, right? Yeah, man. It's been... So well, tell, tell me what's, what's been up with you. Five years ago, you came out of Paseo Academy, right? Yeah. Bring, bring us up to 2020. What's been going on? Well, uh, 2020, five years ago, came out of uh, Paseo, graduated, went to Alvala for a year uh, on a cross-country and track scholarship. I left Alvala, went to MCC. Um, Eventually left MCC to help my parents uh, with their daycare center. Been having that for 24 years. Um, now that's kind of what I'm doing for a time. I'm working at the daycare. I'm planning on going back to school to uh, get some credits to be the director at the daycare and eventually take it over, most likely with my two sisters. And, you know, someday my younger brother might jump, jump in the fold or he might do his own thing. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's really neat. I don't think I ever knew you were in a family that ran a daycare. I grew up yeah. with a family that ran a preschool and a church. So 
we definitely had a lot in common, whether we knew that we could, we could like sense that back when we were seemed like we were so yeah. much different ages. I think it's so wild now to, to talk to everybody. Everybody's doing such amazing things. Um, so that's a really neat job to take on. And I, I'm excited for you to, to go back to school and like you're saying, just get what you need to run that place. So fantastic. Um, do you have a new poem for us we could hear today? Uh, yeah, so um, I've been working with this uh, kid. His name is Ethan. He's uh, also in the Kansas City School District, go to Northeast. He uh, been wanting me to teach him a little bit how to write, kind of like how you did me. Nice. So uh, I've been working on something with him. He uh, got a verse. He wrote a verse, and uh, he asked me to write something for him. Uh, it's, he called it Struggle 2020. So uh, this is what I wrote. It goes like, I understand. I ain't start this year off right. 20 started with a party. 19, I left Christ. I was feeling like the man, the heartbreak had me crying. There was darkness in my mind like I couldn't find the light. Then the quarantine happened. COVID-19 got us locked in. Can't even go outside without a mask and sanitized hands. Trying to get the money, unemployment, handing out bands. Forces not to work and complain about a recession. Feeling helpless, can't feed my kids without assistance. Free us from slavery, but now the master is the mister. Still working for the white like the fame when it's in his system. Walk around with chains, but these are just invisible. We killing our legends before they even have a chance. Put your knee on my neck, I can't breathe, is what we chant. Too much going on this year, just waiting for it to end. But I keep my faith in God. I know that he got a plan. Woo! All right, man. That's really fun. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Somehow just, just chilling in the car makes it even more theatric, right? Like, <laughs> that's real. Um, yeah. That's real. I love I love the patterning, and I, I think you've grown, right? Like, I think I can hear steps you've taken since you were in school to, to keep working on your craft. So it's also yeah. really amazing that you're doing that with a, another young person. Um, that's really cool, really exciting. You can imagine yeah. I would like that. So on that level, since you're working with somebody, like, what kind of advice do you pass on or what do you, what do you do to encourage this young man you're working with? Well, uh, when I was younger, uh, I always wanted somebody to like push me and motivate me to, you know, every day just to chase after my dream, no matter if I don't even believe in it. And, uh, you know, it's really hard to find people that will take the time out to think about you and, uh, you know, motivate you to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one thing I do. I try to, you know, take the time out of my day, no matter what, to, uh, you know, just send them a message like, yo, keep keep working at it. Whatever you're trying to do, keep working at it. But my main advice for anybody, and especially him when it comes to writing, is to write every day, no matter what. Pick up a pen and pad or your phone. If you write every day, anything. Mm -hmm. um, it might be trash or you might not like it the first few days or whatever. But, you know, it might be good. It might turn out to be good. You, you kind of never know what right in. One moment you write something good, one moment you write something that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of tell them every day to keep writing, and, you know, you're going to eventually create something spectacular. Very good advice. Yeah, I think we realize that as we keep going, is like we, after we've done it for so long, we do feel something about the amount of work we put in. But... Um, you know, when you're younger, you might forget that you're going to put in 15, 20 years or something down the road. And yeah. it, might, it might be amazing if you really put in the work, you know, so that's really cool and really exciting. Um, most of the authors I love get better every single time I see them. And they always say that, like, if I could just live forever, it'd be, they'd, I'd be unstoppable. I'd be the greatest yeah. author in the world. Well, that's wonderful, man. Uh, thank you for sharing that today. And leading kind of this this process i'm going to pop something up here on my screen for us okay. others to possibly think about and let's see if it's back there lumen and where i wanted it to be and if we can put this up um remember that i work for the Kansas city public schools and that is my email so you're not sending something to an agent or somebody that would probably do something uh, with it that you couldn't trust that's why i would go ahead and air this email address and ask for you to perhaps send me something. It could be just your own writing and we could try to set up a time that you wanted to come on, or it could be you performing um, for people down the road that might wanna share examples of some of the things they've done out in the community. 
maybe you have a clip or something that you would want to send my way. Uh, then in the same way that Lamont just came on, we could have you on. You could come on and talk about uh, your craft and what you've been doing with writing yourself. And that'll challenge me to keep writing if I'm going to keep doing a piece for every performer. Um, but maybe I'll basically be the host, just like my inspiration for this all. Um, uh, Bob Boylan on NPR Tiny Desk Contest Top Shelf. So um, let's not share my screen. Hopefully you figured out if you want to do that. Let's jump back but, uh, here and finish out with Lamont. Uh, any closing thoughts, Lamont? We'll bring this one to an end. Um, I don't have any closing thoughts, but can I give you one more piece that I just thought about? You know, I think we can probably live with that. Let's give it a shot. Go for it. All right. Um, I wrote this piece after uh, we lost one of our students from twenty from the class of twenty fifteen. All right. Definitely respect you for this. Then it's a uh, passion and writing, creating my own structure. If I can do that with the world, you think it would be better? Lost Tyra Brown because Death wanted to kiss her. Lost Tommy too. Last name sounding familiar? Sick of all the violence they victimizing our people. Lack of better knowledge, so the cycle will continue. My homie ain't the saint, but why you take Aaron Mason? Probably on better things. I bet he dancing with the angels. Father, God, walk with me and protect me from Satan reaches. I see the demons creeping. I pray they don't stick to me. Focus on today. Who said tomorrow was a guarantee? Never said it'd be easy. I know life is not a cup of tea. I swear it'd be hard, but better days is coming soon. Running from the dark because the light, it feel more comfortable. And when it comes my time, I pray and live a good life. Till then, I'll be praising God, even through the worst times. All right. Wrote that after uh, Aaron Mason passed. Man. Respect to Aaron Mason and his family. Thank you for sharing that, Lamont. Um, we're going to go out on that. It's a hard one to go out on. Respect to all the people who know the people mentioned in that piece. Uh, and again, keep sending us things that are meaningful and important. And let's do this again. Thanks, Lamont. It's been real, man. I look forward to seeing you. Hit me up anytime. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you.